the wife of the only Apostle General. Last week was good. Last two weeks was good with the question time. Just like I said the last time, after every episode, we'll come in with just questions. Where seasoned counselors will come in plus me and then would we'll answer your questions. Today, we will see if we can do a few questions. If we can't, I will do it next week. But make sure that whilst I speak, you come in with your questions, you send in your questions quickly. You know, first come, first serve. What am I doing today? What not to do during courtship? So our topic for this season will be what not to do and what to do during courtship. But for today, I am doing what not to do during courtship. A lot of people are courting and they just don't know the do's and don'ts. I mean, a lot of people. They are even people in the church that they claim they don't know. But if you think you don't know or you claim you don't know, today, open your ears and hear me well. What not to do during courtship? Number one on my list, and I think you must know it by now, and I want somebody to guess what not to do. So what not to do during courtship? No sex. Please write it in capital letters. Use a red ink and underline it. Bold. Don't put a comma. Put a full stop. No sex during courtship. I want to read a scripture to you. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 8. It's a long scripture, but I want you to listen carefully. First Thessalonians chapter 4, from verses 3 to 8. And I'm reading the NIRV, New International Reader's Version. It makes it very, very simple, and even a baby will understand. Now let's go. God wants you to be made holy. God wants you to be made holy. I hope the scripture is on the screen so you can read alongside with me. God wants you to be made holy. He wants you to stay away from sexual sins, underlying sexual sins. If you have your Bible, if you have your notebook, write it down and underline. He wants you to stay away from sexual sins. He wants all of you to learn to control your own bodies. You can't control somebody else's body but you can control your own body. Trust me, the feeling for sex will come. If you are a teenager, you are 20 years and above, and you don't feel for sex, please come and see me. I will let you go through deliverance, or I will get you a doctor. So as for feeling for sex, it is natural. But the Bible says that learn to control your own bodies. You must live in a way that is holy. The Bible has repeated it again. The first one, he says, God wants you to be made holy. And now God is saying you must live in a way that is holy. You must live with honor. You must honor God in your relationship. You must honor God in your courtship. And he says, don't desire to commit sexual sins like people who don't know God. So in other words, one reason why you should not commit sexual sins is because you know God. Those who do not know God are the ones who will commit sexual sins. So don't desire to commit sexual sins like people who don't know God. None of you should sin against, and I want you to listen very, very carefully. 
None of you should sin against your brother or a sister by doing that. I want you to listen carefully. None of you should sin against your brother or sister by doing that. What is the that? The that is the sexual sin. And it says you should not take advantage of your brother or sister. In other words, you have a girlfriend, you have a boyfriend, you are going out with a sister, you are going out with a brother. What the Bible is saying is that don't take advantage of that girl. Don't take advantage of that gentleman. Don't tell the person, if you love me, prove it. By having sex with me, you are taking advantage of the person. Number two, you can't lure the person to have sex with you. You can't force the person to have sex with you. You can't coerce the person to have sex with you. And listen to what God does. The Lord will punish everyone who commits this kind of sins. The Lord will punish everyone who commits this kinds of sins. In other words, you've met the lady. The lady says, listen, I want to keep my virginity. Or I made a mistake as, an, as a believer. Now I am a believer. I don't want to do it again. Secondary, secondary virginity. The first one, you've never had sex. Primary virginity. The second one, secondary. In other words, you've become born again. And you've decided you want to live pure for the Lord. My darling, if your partner wants to live pure for the Lord, help the person to live pure for the Lord. Because the Bible says, the Lord will punish everyone who commits these sins, this kind of sins. We have already told you and wanted and warned you about it. So if you don't know, Today, I have told you and I have warned you. Please, don't change the channel. Let it be there. Don't change the channel. Don't be tempted to change the channel. Be there. We have already told you and warned you about this. I have warned you. That because God chose us to live pure lives... He wants us to be holy. This is the third time the Lord is saying it. He wants us to be holy. The first one says God wants you to be made holy. The second one says you must live in a way that is holy. And then this third one, he wants us to be holy. Then he goes on. Suppose someone refuses to accept our teaching. So whatever I am teaching you today, the Bible says, suppose you refuse to accept my teaching. This is what you are doing. They are not turning their back on us. So you are not turning your back on me. They are turning their back on God. You are turning your back on God. The same God gives you his Holy Spirit. Are we ready to go? Anything in a pre-marital relationship that are hints of sexual sins or immorality are, so now I'm going to go into the sexual sins. So anything in a premarital relationship, and listen to me, I said premarital relationship. In other words, you are going out, you are in courtship, but you are not married. Premarital relationship. That are hints of sexual sins or sexual immorality. So, in other words, what are the sexual sins? And remember that the Bible has spoken so much about fornication. 
So if the Bible only means fornication, the Bible will mention fornication. So once the Bible mentions sexual sins, it means that there are some kind or some forms of sexual sins, and I want us to go there. What are the sexual sins? Number one, fornication. Number one, fornication. Maybe you don't know what fornication means, or you are pretending not to know. Fornication is sexual intercourse between two people who are not married. Fornication is sexual intercourse. And I just mentioned them as it is. I did biology in school. Sexual intercourse between two people who are not married. Number two, sexual sin. For play. For play. Maybe you are listening to me. You are old school. And you don't know what for play means. Foreplay means sexual stimulation preceding sexual intercourse. So in other words, the preparation with the body before the real thing is what we call the warm-up, the jogging, the heating, the jumping a bit, the stretching. That is what we call the foreplay. Number three, sexual sin. Number three, sexual sin. Nudity. Nudity. Nudity means nakedness. The state of being without clothes or covering. Some people will say, we won't have sex. But then, I want to see your nakedness. Let me see how your shape is like. When I wear a dress, you can see my shape. So nudity, nakedness. Number four, number four, pornography. 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 Somebody came looking for scholarship for the son and was trying to let me know the group in which the son is. And the man said, oh, my son, Mebano, my son is in the pornography group. I said, eh? I said, what did you say? He said, oh, Mebano a pornography group. I said, we don't have any group like that. I said, oh, that is so free, pornography rehearsal. I said, oh, I said, I said, I said, also, I'm more sad to a new pornography, a new choreography. <laughs> so, please, we don't have pornography group in Royal House Chapel. We have choreography. So, what is pornography? It's porn writing, pictures, and films to stimulate sexual desires. So, it's not only films. But it is pictures and it is writing. Normally, nakedness. Normally, people having sex and all that is what we call pornography. It is a sexual sin. Number five. Number five. Five. Sexual sin. Blow job. Blow job, and I say I'll say it as it is. What is blow job? Blow job is when the lady sucks the penis or the manhood of the man. Oh, we won't have sex. Sex is sin, but you can do blow job on me. It is a sexual sin. Blow job. We won't have sin. I won't break your virginity. But if you really love me, please blow job me. The next one, after blow job, sexual sin, is head. Your head. 
H E A D. What is head? Head is the is the female version of the blow job. So in blow job is the female who does the work. In the head is the man or the gentleman who does the work. What the gentleman does is that the gentleman puts the head into the private part of the woman and uses his lips to do whatever he wants to do. It is called head. Number seven. Is it seven or eight? Seven. Phone sex. Phone sex is to have sex through the phone. So you call each other and you say dirty things to arouse your feelings. So you can say on the phone, oh, kiss me. So the lady pretends, pretends she's kissing you. The lady can say, hold my breasts. So on the other side of the phone, the lady holds her breast, pretending it is you, it is you having sex with her and holding the breast. It is called phone sex. People think, oh, fornication, sexual intercourse is sin. But oh, we can do phone sex. My darling, phone sex is a sin. If you are a mother listening to me or you are a father listening to me, I hope you are listening to the terminologies. The next one is what we call the dry sex. Dry sex or dry humping. H-U-M-P-I-N-G. Dry sex. Dry sex means that you have sex in your clothes. Oh, we can't have sex. We can't have sex. I don't want to break your virginity. But then, you will wear your dress. I will wear my dress. And you do everything like you are having sex. It's called friction. Uh, you do everything. You are wearing your clothes. But you are having sex. He's using his manhood in his jeans. To touch your, and sometimes they will lift up the dresses of the ladies. When now the heat becomes too much, they will lift up the dresses of the ladies. The ladies wearing the pants, and they have dry sex. Sometimes they go beyond it. When the temptation becomes too much, they go beyond it. Dry sex. And then we also have...